Chris's work this morning. How'd she go? She went very well. So we went a half mile. This is uh, our final breeze before the race next week on the 8th at uh, Belmont Park, the Acorn. Um, it was a work that is typical of her. She's very enthusiastic when she works. Um, the finishing time and the last portion of the work was quicker than the first portion, but all in hand, and uh, and she's showing us that she's ready. You know, you cranked on her pretty good to make sure she was ready for the Oaks. Right. Would you say, at what level percentage, if you can say, was she for the Oaks, and what is she now? Well, I think the oak speaks for itself. She was ready, you know, but uh, but but the difference in training is that, you know, now that she's fit, all we're doing is maintaining. Whereas coming into the uh, Kentucky Oaks, we did a lot to feel like she was ready to run that distance. How does it change things for you now that she is a grade one winner, has won the most important three-year-old Philly race as far as yeah. potting out the rest of the year? I think it changes in a couple of ways. Number one, I think there's certainly an expectation from Serengeti Empress and from our stable to show that uh, despite a lot of really important wins, particularly the Kentucky Oaks, that she can keep doing it and keep doing its top competition. We're going to New York, you know, they say the buildings get bigger there uh, when you cross the Hudson and surely they do. Uh, we need to show that we can do it on the, on the stage other than just uh, Kentucky. Although that was a pretty deep Oaks. Um, you took on all comers, California, New York. We yeah. took them all on, and when you look at the separation, particularly between the first two finishers in the Oaks, Serengeti Empress and uh, Wayne Catalano's horse, going back to the third place horse, it was a ways back. So I think they really showed that they were the top of the class. You're a big picture kind of guy, so I'm thinking what we haven't exactly said is that you're also thinking of ways to make her a champion. Yeah, well, no. you know, uh, obviously, um, that we'd, we'd like to uh, see her at the end of the year be three-year-old champion. I'm sure there's a lot of people that would like to challenge that and will challenge that between now and, say, uh, November. So uh, we'll see how it goes. What do you know about the acorn field and your thoughts on it? Not a lot. Uh, I, I, look, we're shorting up in distance and we're going to one turn. Anytime you do things like that, you're inviting more speed into the race. I'm sure there'll be a lot of speed in the race. I'm not going to sit here and do as I did before the Kentucky Oaks where I said, hey, we're going to be on the lead. Uh, I made that statement before the Oaks. Uh, I don't know that that's going to be the case in the Acorn. We're just going to see how it plays out. You were very open about the rider change that Jose, who was so enthusiastic about her, but he's right. also pretty much tied to Chad Brown. Yeah. Uh, who's he riding in there? Uh, he's riding a Chad Brown horse. That's yeah. all I know. Yeah. But you, you took that in stride and you got his brother. Yeah, right. So uh, they look a lot alike. So I probably won't even notice the difference in the paddock. Hopefully she doesn't on her back.